Hey guys, welcome back to another video with InfoSec Pat. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the Red Team Fundamentals room inside Trihackme. Crazy thing just happened. I did the box, did the video, and my headphones died. I have these new wireless headphones that I'm doing my videos with, and they decided to die. So when I finished it, I went to go play it back, and there was no sound. So hopefully we can go through this quickly. And it is pretty pretty simple room. There's nothing too crazy. It's just answering some questions. I just did this for my the first time. So now we're going to see the answers, but I want to walk you through it. Hopefully um, it makes sense. Sorry about that, folks. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. Thank you so much for checking it out. This is going to be a walkthrough on the Red Team Fundamentals. And we're going to probably do uh, the, uh, the Red Team Engagement. I think there's a Red Team Recon Room. But we're going to start off with the fundamentals. All right. So as you see, it just says congratulations because I just completed it. And now I'll just go walk through this really quick. It's a very, uh, pretty quick. So before we get started, like I want to go to learn really quick. And how do you get to that? What I did, I just go to search, go to free. If you don't have the, sorry, let me just, if you don't have the premium, don't worry, you can do it. Um, it's free as you see here. So we'll do the uh, red team fundamentals today. Then there's red team engagement and red team uh, recon. Maybe we'll mess with this. The next video, we'll do the engagement, but let's go ahead and um, start out with this. So the introduction, this is pretty much the objectives. What is the objectives? Like I said, I just you know did this video. And I want to try to go through this very quickly because I do have my dinner cooking. So I want to try to go through this as quickly as possible. So the objectives for this room is we're going to learn the basics of red teaming, you know, identify the main components and understand the main differences, differences between red teaming and other types of cybersecurity engagements. And pretty much the, the, the prereqs are to complete the junior penetration tester recommended. And if you're not familiar with that, you can go to learn junior pen tester. I haven't touched this. Um, as you can see, like I, I don't have the premium edition on this account. So I wanted to use a free account so you guys can see that I don't have any funky business. And then I guess, I don't know what this is. I guess there's a certification or certificate of completion for the junior penetration tester. So I guess you know, some of these you have to, you have to pay. I'm not sure if they're all free for that specific um, room, but I'm not going to, you know, sidetrack myself. Let's stay on track. So you can just hit, comp you know, uh, check, check answer. And then it's, there's no answer needed here. So the vulnerability management and penetration tester uh, limitations. So we're going to do, you know, vulnerability assessments and you can read through this. It's a very, very simple, like as an example, if we're going to run a, an assessment over a network, this is what it'll look like. We're the pen tester out here on the interwebs. We have the beautiful internet. And then there's a firewall to the company. There's a router. And then there's some internal users and an internal server on the intranet. Let's see if I can make this a little larger. And then on the bottom here, we have www mail DNS FTP. These are probably on a DMZ, a de demilitarized zone, which is on the public facing internet where it says public servers. Okay, so you know you can read through all of this. Like I said, I just did all this. I don't want to sit here and do all of it again. I apologize. But you know, penetration tests, you know, attempt to exploit the vulnerabilities on the system. And then we can conduct post-exploitation tasks to compromise the host. So that's pretty much what sums it up. You can read through it. So the penetration tests, you know, might start with scanning for vulnerabilities. That's what we normally do. We can see if the host or the network device is vulnerable or susceptible to any vulnerabilities, or any exploitations for the vulnerabilities that reside on those machines. Sometimes you don't need a, like a 
a vulnerability that's from a scanner, you know, maybe you can leverage low hanging fruit like, you know, pass the hash, pass the password. Maybe you can use other kinds of techniques to compromise a system, not always like a public exploit. Just a little FYI. All right, so now we have this little diagram down here. We have the penetration tester um, compromise the www server using a SQL injection. That's what the SQL lowercase i is for injection. And then they were able to get onto this www box and then pivot to Alice's PC using weak credentials. So maybe they found, you know, maybe it was Alice for the username and then they just password sprayed and they found her, her credentials and then she was able to, or yeah, she, because it looks like a woman, she was able to compromise um, Alice's PC. And then she also compromised the FTP with a known exploit. Okay. So, you know, by analyzing how the attack that can move around the network, you know, we can have gain basic insight on possible security measures, bypasses, and our ability to detect a real threat. Okay. So, you know, APTs and, you know, regular pen tests is not enough. You know, like you have to put some more effort into your, into your red teaming and into your insider threats, uh, your social engineering uh, programs, your maybe your phishing campaigns, uh, security awareness training. All of this is good stuff to have on the inside of your network and for your users to, to uh, mitigate any exploits and outside craziness. Okay, so. Penetration tests are loud, you know, non-technical attacks, attack vectors might be overlooked, you know, such as social engineering, just like I said, physical in intrusion, like maybe um, tailgating into a, a building, maybe I can get into the MDF or the IDF, you know, just asking about, oh, I'm with AT&T or Comcast, I heard your internet's slow, can I please go ahead and check out your internet service if it's, normally if it's a small company, they'll probably let you in. You'll be surprised. But obviously you have to make sure you have permission to do so. Don't just go walking into a building saying, I want to check it out. Um, you'll be in trouble. So uh, relaxation of security uh, mechanisms, right? So we can see while you know doing a regular penetration test, some security mechanisms might be temporarily disabled. You know, or relax for the penetration test to favor the efficiency. So, for example, maybe they gave you domain admin rights. Maybe they disabled the firewalls. Maybe they did so many things to, you know, to make it a little more, uh, a little easier, right? So, as we keep going down, on the other hand, real uh, real attackers won't follow an ethical code, right? So, mostly unrestricted. In their actions, so like if the real guys are probably going to be locked out and you know permitted uh, permitted from doing so, right? So these you know these bad actors are also known as APTs, right? Which are highly skilled groups of attackers. Okay, so these are you know sponsored by nations and organized criminal groups, etc. The crazy, excuse me, the crazy guys. So if a company is affected by an APT you know, you're not going to be in good shape, right? So, so what if uh, a zero day exploit was involved? Uh, do previous penetration tests prepare us for that? Okay, that's a question you can ask yourself. Like I said, we I just did this, this room. So, you know, obviously, I want to walk through this. And it sucks that your answers are there now, because I just answered everything as we went through the video, but I had a hiccup. No sound. All right. So, would vulnerability manage? Uh, would vulnerability assessments prepare us to detect a real, you know, attacker on the network? The answer is nay. It's not going to. Number two, during a penetration test, are you concerned about being detected? No, because you know the client knows you're doing the pen test, so you should be good. You're not acting as a APT, right? So, highly organized groups, skilled. Attackers are nowadays referred to as APTs. Okay, so task number three: um, red team and engagements. 
So I'm not going to go ahead and read all this. We can look at um, this little guy here. We have the red team penetration tester. We compromised Bob's PC with a phishing campaign. So maybe we sent him an email with a remote code execution, something that we were able to leverage um, some remote application. Uh, so we were able to take over that machine. And then from there, we were able to access the internal server with the credentials found on Bob's email. So maybe we said, oh, Bob, we need your username and password. Uh, I want to check and see how secure your password is. Please send it over ASAP. This is Bob. Uh, this is Tom with the IT department, and they send them. You know, they send the attacker their credentials, and he was able to access it. Not just a, just a, an example, right? And these are the blue teamers. These are the defenders looking at all the logs. Okay. So, you know, red team engagements also improve on regular penetration tests by considering several attack services, technical infrastructure, social engineering, physical intrusion, okay? And you can go ahead and read those and learn more about it. So depending on the resources available, the red team exercise can be ran several ways. We can do a full engagement, assume breach, tabletop exercises, okay? So the goal of the red team engagement will be often referred to as flags or crown jewels. We can see that up here, uh, crown jewels right here or flags. Okay, right here, sorry. Okay, so there, there goes answer for number one here. And during a, a red team engagement, common methods used by attackers to emulate against the target. Some methods are usually called TT, TTSs and what does TTP or TTPS is? Did I say that? And what does TTP stand for? Taxes, techniques, and procedures. Okay. So number three, the main objectives of a red team engagement is to detect so many vulnerabilities in as many hosts as we can, or as possible. Nay, that's not you know that's not the main objective of a red team engagement. Okay. So let's go to task number four. This is a lot to read. So we're just going to look at the, the main things here. Red cell, blue cell, white cell. So the red cell is to, you know, the red teamers. The blue cell is to like the defenders, which is the blue teamers. And the white cell is to referee between red cell and the blue cell, okay, during engagement. So as you can see here, white cell is a trusted agent and red cell Red cell assistant lead, blah, blah, blah. We can see, for instance, whoops, I didn't mean to do that. But we can see here, uh, you can click on this guy and you can be brought here and you can look down and learn more about that. Okay. So if we keep going down, we can see different roles the red team lead, red team assistant lead, red team operator. Then we can see the purposes here. Okay. So we can go right into the questions. So what cell is responsible for the offensive operations of this engagement? So it's going to be a red cell, right? They're the ones that are the offensive people. And what is the trusted, the trusted agent considered? White cell, as you can see here, right? The trusted agent. Okay, so task number five. So we can look at different, um, this is the engagement structure. So we have so many things here, right? We have many regulations and standardizations, um, the kill chain, the cyber kill chain, et cetera. You can click on all of these. I had these open from when I was doing the video and these are pretty important. So you can go through this and uh, check it out. I'm not gonna click on everything and read it. We'll have a three hour video. So pretty much we're gonna go and learn about the uh, Lockheed Martin uh, cybersecurity kill chain. Okay, so this is the techniques, reconnaissance, weaponization, delivery, exploitation, installation, command and control, and actions uh, on objectives. Okay, so if we just go down here to question number one, and if a adversary deployed Mimikatz on a target machine, where would this be placed? 
I would say installation because we're installing a piece of software, as you can see right here, Mimikatz as well, as some examples. So the installation uh, technique, okay? What technique's purpose of is to exploit the target system. So exploitation, as you see here, we'll exploit some code. All right, task number six, it was pretty much view the site and it's gonna give you, you know, uh, just like a little breakdown, you can read it and, you know, so on and so forth. Like I said, I don't wanna, so this is pretty much the SAM, uh, the bank, the system key, user administrator, the LTLM hash, blah, blah, blah. And next, next. And right here, use the THM red team rocks for the answer. That was the answer here. And I hit submit and we were good. And the conclusion was right here. This There was nothing, there's no, no question to answer. Just a pretty much an overview of the red team engagement. And that's about it. And then when you're done, you get a little fancy thing that you saw in the beginning of the of the video. And that was pretty much it. And yeah, so hopefully it's been informative for you. Sorry that the first video got out of whack, but hopefully this has been informative. If you have any questions, please feel free to you know leave in the comments below. And I'll be doing the next one, which is the Let's go back to red team. So the fundamentals was today. I want to do the engagements next and and we'll we'll get through this. All right. So until next time, have a good one and be safe. Talk to you guys soon.